In this lecture, let's learn how to filter a list in React. In this React application, we are displaying a list of products. Now, some of the products here are available and some are unavailable. So what we want is, we want to provide the user a way to filter these products based on its availability. Let's see how we can do that. But before that, I want to modify this UI a little bit. So for that, let's go to VS Code. And here, from this product list component, I want to copy these two divs and I want to use them in app.js. So let's replace this div with the two divs which we have just copied. And let's also provide a closing div element here. Now let's go to product list component here and let's remove these two divs. And let's also remove these two closing div elements. Now let's go to this create product component and from here, I will remove this first div. Let's also remove its closing tag. And from the second div, I'm going to remove this class name. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now it looks fine. Now I also want to remove this margin. For that, here we are setting this margin bottom. So let's remove it. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now our UI looks nice. Let's also provide some border radius for this form. For that, here, let's again use this border radius property and let's set it to 2. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here, the border radius has been set. All right. Now, after this form, we want to add a new component, a filter component. For that, let's go back to VS Code. Let me close this create product component here. And let's also close this product list component. And inside this components folder, so inside this folder, let's go ahead and let's create a new folder and let's call this filter product. And inside this filter product, let's go ahead and let's create a new file. And let's call this filter product.js. So this file is going to contain our filter product component. For that, Let's go ahead and let's create a function. And this time I'm going to use arrow function syntax. And let's call this component filter product. And to this, let's assign an arrow function. Now you can also use regular function or anonymous function here. So that is also going to work. Now from this filter product function, we want to return some JSX. And in order to save some time, I have already written that JSX, so let's copy it from here and let's paste it here. Let's also go ahead and let's export this component function. Now, on this div, let's go ahead and let's use this class name attribute. And to this, let's assign a CSS class. Let's call it maybe filter area. And now, inside this filter product folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it filterproduct.css. And inside this filterproduct.css, we are going to write some CSS code, which we want to apply on this filter product component. So first of all, let me go ahead and let me create this CSS class inside this filterproduct.css file. And here we want to set the width and we want to set it to 100%. We also want to set the background color to white and let's also set some padding. So top bottom maybe two pixel and left right, let's say 20 pixel. Now let's go ahead and let's use this filter product component in this app component. So after this create product form, this create product component, we want to use this filter product component. And in order to use this filter product component, we also need to import it. So at the top, let's write the import statement so we want to import filter product from and the path here will be current directory from there we need to go to this components folder there we have this filter product folder and inside this we have this filter product.js file all right with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page so here you can see a drop down has been displayed but i don't see the css styles which we have specified that's because we also need to import this filter product.css inside this filter product component. So at the top, again, let's specify the import statement. 
and here we want to import filter product.css file with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now that style has been applied let's also go ahead and let's set some border radius and border style let's go to the web page and now you can see some border radius and also the border style has been set all right now what we want is whenever the user selects available in that case this product list should only display the available products and when he selects unavailable in that case it should only display unavailable products and here when all is selected in that case it should display all the products let's see how we can do that for that let me close this css file here so whenever the user selects a value from this drop down a change event will happen on this select element so here we can listen to the change event for that we can use on change event listener and to this we can assign a function let's call this function on filter value changed and let's go ahead and let's create this function now since this function this on filter value changed function is an event handler function it is also going to receive the event object which has occurred on this element and we know that this event object has a target property and that target property will have a value property which will store the currently selected value and just to check that let's go ahead and let's log it so here this event will have this target object and this target object will have a value property let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me open developer console here let's clear everything now when i select all you will notice that all has been logged here when i select available available has been logged here when i select unavailable then unavailable has been logged here okay now what we want is we want to pass this value from filter product component to app component so here this filter product component this component is the child component of this app component so from the child component we want to pass a value to the parent component and we have already seen how to do that for that in the parent component we can create a function let's call this function on filter value selected and for this function we want to receive the filter value so here let's pass a parameter let's call it filter value and now we want to call this function whenever the value of this drop down changes all right so what we can do is we can call this function inside this on filter value changed function and to do that we need to pass this function to this filter product component so on this filter product component let's create an attribute let's call it filter value selected and to this let's assign this function okay so here for this filter product component we are going to receive this props object and on this props object with this name a property will be created and that will be assigned with this on filter value selected function so we can call that function here using this props object so on this props object we can call this filter value selected function and this function is expecting a value for this filter value parameter for that we can pass this value okay and let's remove this console.log statement from here and in the app.js for now inside this function let's go ahead and let's log the filter value parameter just to check what we are receiving inside this parameter let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's clear everything here let me select unavailable so unavailable has been logged here let's select all all has been logged here let's select available available has been logged here so in this way in this app component we are receiving the filter value which the user has selected in the web page using this value we want to filter this new product list for that let's first go ahead and let's create a new state using this use state function 
and we know that this use state function is going to return an array so here let's use the array destructuring syntax and inside these square brackets let's specify the variable name let's call it maybe filter text value and let's also specify the state updating function let's call it update filter text okay and for the initial value here let's pass all now inside this on filter value selected event handler function instead of logging this filter value let's go ahead and let's pass this filter value to this update filter text function so this function is going to update the value of this filter text value variable with the value which we have inside this filter value parameter now let's go ahead and let's create a new variable and let's call it maybe filtered product list and to this variable we want to assign an array with the filtered products for that on this new product list on this array i'm going to call a function called filter so this filter function is also a transformation function and this filter function also takes a callback function okay so this filter function is going to loop over this new product list array and for each iteration it is going to pass the current element from this array to this callback function let's call it product now inside the body of this callback function let's write some if else statement so let's say if the value of this filter text value variable if it is equal to available in that case we want to return all those products whose is available property is set to true otherwise if this variable is set with the value unavailable in that case we want to return all those products whose is available is set to false so again let's use this return statement and here let's say product dot is available equals false and if this filter text value is neither available nor unavailable in that case we want to return all the products so here let's say return product and now instead of passing this new product list let's go ahead and let's pass this filtered product list now if we save the changes and if we go to the web page and currently it is displaying all the products if i select available products now it should display only available products if i select unavailable products now it should display only unavailable products and if i select all it should display all the products so in this way we have implemented the filter logic for this product list